Hello and welcome to Five Questions with the Resilient Hairdresser. So every week I have a new hairdresser, but always the same five questions. So I'm excited about today. <clears throat> I've got one of my friends on, Thomas Freer. Now, Thomas is a Weller Passionista and also the founder of Unity. Now, I met Thomas on Instagram. So uh, they are an Instagram friend of mine. So I'm really looking forward to talking to them. Uh, and I love it when I just don't know what the answers are going to be to any of the questions. So I see he's rocking up. So let's wait for them to request. Here we go. Computer's thinking. Hello. Hey. You are right. I'm good, how are you? Yeah, not bad, love. Had a good day? Uh, yeah, it's been all right. What about you? Busy? Good, busy. I had such a palaver earlier. I literally forgot my peroxide, my bowel, the shampoo. I was like, great. This is lovely. <laughs> this is Christmas. <laughs> this is Christmas. <laughs> we nearly had matching jumpers on. Oh, did we? We would have looked the right pair. Yeah! <laughs> Would have we'll, been coordinate, great. we'll coordinate next time. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, I usually like to start by just sort of telling people a little bit about how we know each other. Um, yeah. You know, and so what I think is kind of funny is I'm really excited to talk to you in real time because yeah. we just usually communicate via voice notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We just leave each other random voice notes. But do you want to tell the story of how we met or do you want me to do it? Yeah, we could both do it. Um, we'll do it together. Yeah, like, when was it? It must have been like I think it July. was early lockdown. Early? Yeah. It was in the yeah. first lockdown. Yeah, so it must have been like March, April time. Mm-hmm. Probably think around so. then, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we... um. Obviously, I shared an experience that I had in the industry and then um, decided to kind of extend it further to create a unity, which is kind of like mm -hmm. a side life for what you do as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you reached out and I was like, this sounds incredible. What a wonderful human. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's get on this. Let's let's connect. And um, like even from that first phone call we had, like my husband was like, she sounds great. And I'm like, uh. she sounds great. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think the same about you. I just, I saw your story and, you know, you were going, there's no mental health for hairdressers. And I was literally watching going, me, me, I do that. I do yeah. that. Quick. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I yeah. do this. I'd like to help. So Got that's essentially that. how we met, isn't it? And we've never met in person, but we speak via voice note a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's basically where we are. Yeah. So, okay, let's dive in. Yeah, let's do Are it. <laughs> nah. So, question number one. Have you ever experienced burnout, Thomas, as a hairdresser? Oh, my God, so much. So <laughs> much. Um, I don't I know like I'm laughing. I'm laughing. It's not even <laughs> funny. It's the familiar laugh of hairdressers who are like, of course. Yeah. I feel like, I, I, it's, I feel like there's such a huge pressure on being a successful hairdresser and kind of having to work your bum off until you get to that point. And it, it, there's almost that kind of um, sort of idea that you just have to suck it up and that you're just going to have to deal with that hard work. Like and pay that your hard dues, work. do you mean that sort of yeah. thing? You know, like you've yeah. got, there's a point where you have to work like that until you make it. Whatever yeah, that means, like, I, and then you can coast a bit more. Yeah, I guess because, like, I from my personal experience, and like even to now, like I find like I'm I work blooming hard anyway, but like I I find that pressure that's put on someone it, it's just so unrealistic for someone who wants to be successful, happy, and earning money. Do you know what successful I mean? Successful like, and happy. <laughs> it, it's such a like. But then, like, weighing scales of, like, what mm -hmm. would you rather? Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I feel like if there's more education, like what you do, mm -hmm. that balance is going to become easier. Yeah. Because there's, it, it, 
you just turn your, you just turn yourself into like a working machine. You just mm-hmm. don't have any time for friends, family, personal yeah. time, mental health, like anything. Yeah. I feel, I mean, I, I was saying to my friend the other day, I said, I feel like as a hairdresser, burnout is never far away. It's always just like here, yeah. you know, just sat next to me going, can yeah. I come in yet? Can I? <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's never far away and it's such a constant vigilance. And I felt so often I've had to choose between money and my health. Yeah. And it's that, what a shit, what a shit choice, <laughs> you know? It's, it's mental, like, both, please. I like both. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy both fully. But that has sometimes felt like the option, like I've got to push myself. Yeah. Or, or be skinned. Yeah, exactly. I think, like, because, especially for, I guess, for, like, freelance people as well, like, Mm -hmm. it, it's so destroying when you're, like, being successful and then, like, you're like, oh, God, what if I have this bad month or, like, COVID, do you know what I mean? Like, you spend four months with no income Mm -hmm. and it's, like... What if I get the flu? That's my, my panic is usually winter. I'm like, if anyone dares to sneeze near me, I'm like, get away. Unless (laughs) you're going to pay my bills, go away. Literally, yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yeah, so it is. It's exhausting, isn't it? I think. Yeah. yeah. So you think it's fair to say that's an on and off thing for you? Yeah, like I, de- I definitely, I think because I only went. Obviously, I only went freelance in November last year, so it's only been just over a year. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. So, like, but prior, like when I was working in a, in a salon, the mentality is very like because we all know that basic wage for a hairdresser is pretty shit. Mm-hmm. um and it is commission based and mm-hmm. i found myself working and working and squeezing people in as much as i could and that constant reminder from your boss being like you need to work smarter not harder mm-hmm. is like constantly in the back of my head it really <laughs> bugs me like, it does absolutely boils <laughs> my way. and i'm just like i'm working extremely hard for you and it again bringing you lots of money in and then you don't see a lot of that I think Mm. that it is that balance of like but I need to work I need to get more money to like earn a living and be Mm -hmm. like happy in a place where I can afford Mm -hmm. things and pay my rent and Mm -hmm. it's either I think I think burnout was worse going freelance because there's that a huge amount of pressure to be like oh my Mm -hmm. god what if I have a quiet month I literally have to pay my rent yeah I was meaner I'm meaner to myself than any boss has ever been to me yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. ridiculously. Uh, yeah. You know, the pressure I put on myself is worse than anything anyone else has ever done to me. Yeah. Um, which is ridiculous, you know. Yeah. What to say about that? <laughs> but it's exhausting. Gone for hours. <laughs> yeah, but I, I made a decision early on this year that I would choose health over money no matter what. Uh, yeah. And I'm sticking to it, and it's hard. Yeah. But I'm sticking to it, and I think it pays off eventually, you know, because no yeah. health, no money anyway. Exactly. You know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Question two. I have to read them. Like, there's only five and they're always the same. <laughs> and I still have to read them because I think, what if I get it wrong? So, what's the moment everything changed for you in your career? What would you say? Um, probably, like, two things that really stand out is kind of mm-hmm. leaving... Um, my job in London was a very, very big one for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of got to that boiling point of I'm not going to be in this industry anymore and mm-hmm. I don't want to do it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I hit the all-time low that I probably faced in my life. And I was just like, Jesus, like I've left one career to start hair and now this career has like, gone to pot and I hate it and like I never want to be doing this again. Mm-hmm. Um so that was kind of like probably one of a big turning point because it just made me reflect and like look at everything in my life to what to do Mm -hmm. um and then kind of luckily I rebuilt myself um with the help of lots of amazing people around me um and I guess going freelance as well like it was such a huge step Mm -hmm. because I built myself up so much from where I was, mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, it's only been like four years. Should I be going through lots of Like, <laughs> yeah. Am I allowed? Do I have the right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just out of interest, because I don't know this, what, was, what career did you leave to become a hairdresser? It's kind of similar, but I was a dog groomer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I like went to the stage, did all of that jazz. I like, I just hated it though. Like, I, oh, I loved yeah. it, mm -hmm. but like every day I was pooed on, I was weed on, I was bitten, I was scrap. I was just like, and the, the owners, the owners are the worst. Like, I was like, <laughs> you would not speak to me like this if it was your hair. Like, poor. Yeah. oh, that's funny. Yeah, so you're fully qualified drug groomer and all the things. Well, I nearly was. Like, I, cause I only did it for like a year and a bit. I had like one more thing to do, but I was just waking up every day like, nah, I don't like yeah. this. So oh, that's just funny. Kind of I'm going to go and yeah. do it on people. Yeah. Do you call yeah. Pablo? Yeah, I do. Do you want to see him? Should yeah. Him? <laughs> yeah, what is it? He looks so scruffy. He hasn't had a glass in like a month. <laughs> oh, hello. Ah. He's <laughs> He looks like he's got a bob. He does. He has that. He has that perfect bob. <laughs> That's a full on, full on eighties yeah. bob going on there. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the turning point. It's a really big thing, isn't it? A turning point. You know, in leaving a successful salon, thinking you hate hairdressing, <laughs> picking yourself up, and then you know being brave enough to go and work for yourself because that's hard. Yeah. You know, uh, and what do you think, what made you stay in hairdressing? Um, I think, it's a, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I think because I'd spent so much time and energy and everything into investing into like learning and like working as hard as I could and like commuting and everything like that. I think it really, I, I think because it took me, I, I did have like probably two weeks where I just did nothing and was like, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. And I think when I started just casually, because obviously I was like, oh, I've got no money. So I started doing like friend's hair and like obviously my mum and everything. And um, I kind of started easing back into it. And I think just having that communication between myself and like other people that I enjoy being around, not people that are awful, it kind of, it just started making me enjoy it a bit more. And then I think my mum, bless her, was like such a rock. I was, Aww. my mum was like, you really loved this. Like you really, really did love this. Like just really think about it. Um, and then I moved down to be with my now husband. So mm -hmm. I was like, maybe I'll enjoy it a bit more being in a completely different place. Mm -hmm. So I don't know anyone and like, I can just rebuild myself and enjoy the company of other people that hopefully won't make me feel like shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I mean, I've had this moment a few times, you know, I mean, I just, I left the industry completely and then came back, but yeah. it's that thing of sometimes it's not that I don't like doing hair. It's that sometimes I don't enjoy the culture where I am. Um, and, and you know, that's the thing that you want to get away from. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard though. And I think what's sad, and one of the main reasons I started The Resilient Hairdresser was because hairdressers jump so fast to, I'm sick of it, I'm going to have to quit. Like that's where, that's like number one thing we go for. We don't yeah. even go, I'm going to change salon. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be a barber. I'm going to learn color. You know, nothing. It's just like, I'm going to have to quit. It, yeah. And it's always the same. And whenever I say this, hairdressers laugh and they're like, yeah, yeah. Honestly, the amount of conversations where people are like, oh, my daughter used to be a hairdresser, but she hated it. Like, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. like it's so like, many. Just that one shot, though, maybe, you know, people are saying, so true, so true. It is. And I, I sort of wanted to create other possibilities for people of maybe you won't jump so fast to that if you had these other little skills. So... Yeah, yeah, that's the main thing. I just thought it's funny how we all do it. It's so extreme. Yeah. So, question three. I still can't get over, over you a dog groomer. It's really making me shock <laughs> on. <laughs> it it is. So I'm just like, I can see that. It's funny. Um, so, whose career do you admire? Careers, I'd, well, gosh, yeah. I would you probably... More than one. <laughs> definitely, like most well-known would probably be like Eugene Sullivan, like mm -hmm. in awe of them. Like they're just mm -hmm. incredible. I've met them a few times. I was Ooh. lucky enough to like watch them work and like, oh, like, and hearing their story as well, how they didn't come from like 
originally from hair either, which was like, I'm not going to see myself a bit in you, which was like really nice. Was he a dog groomer um, as well? Just I wish. Do you know what? I feel like we would have been like kindred spirits or something if that were the case. <laughs> I think he did like, I think he just did like general art studies before oh. becoming a hairdresser. But I think he then dropped out. I'm sure he dropped out and then he went into becoming a hair, but he just kind of, he just kind of went round and was like, look, I want to do this. Can you, mm -hmm. can you do it? Like, can I come in? Yeah. Work? So have you assisted him? No. So I did, I won a couple of education classes that he did where he did different wigs, styling and hair that he's done from like different fashion runways um, mm -hmm. for fashion week. Mm -hmm. And then I won a, fa a little, it was kind of assisting, but it was more like, I obviously wasn't allowed to do hair because I'm not on their team. But, um, Wella was um, doing a little competition which I won with a couple of other people and we got to hands on watch him work and like I obviously was like have a clip okay. <laughs> do you need a brush like I want to be I on your it. team <laughs> <laughs> so it's like shadowing them yeah and then we could get like, they asked us to get like as much content as possible so we could like share it oh, and show what a great amazing. day it was yeah and we got oh, front yeah. row seats at bloody Preen by Thornton and Bregazzi I was like yes fancy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah made it how nice so where was that london london yeah that was room. covent garden yeah it was um really cool space actually it was kind of like right by um oh my god john frieda is it john frieda i'm a bit it's lost john in frieda london covent garden. yeah <laughs> i think i was around that yeah that sounds amazing yeah it was great Mm-hmm. Would you like to um do more session work? Yeah, I think I would. Like I think Because you do a bit, don't you? Yeah, like generally like I think I think I'm on to like going back to like the I guess the first question is like managing how much pressure that I put on myself mm -hmm. to stop that happening because there's always that voice where you're like you see all of these amazing artists and you're like, Oh, but I'm not as good as them or like, oh, I don't know and it's like mm -hmm. it's a pressure isn't it but like I would love to get more into doing session stuff because it would be incredible mm -hmm. I mean I, I think that se this is just what I hear this isn't facts um, but I hear from people that session where there is much more of that you must pay your dues yeah yeah and, you know and so you've got to balance that extra unpaid work with your normal job that's hard isn't it yeah, you know, when you want to keep your health, I've heard this, but you know, it's exciting as well, isn't it? And yeah. high satisfaction. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So who's the other person you were going to say whose career you admire? You said they're probably, you know, not quite so famous. Um, I don't know. Oh my God, I can't remember his surname, but his name's, is it Louis Byrne? Don't know. So, he did, so he's actually got a similar thing to Unity um, called I Can and I Will. Oh, um, that sounds familiar. Yeah, and he, so he actually contacted me. Um, he does, like, Emma Willis's hair, Lily Allen, like, mm -hmm. just really cool, like, editorial shoots. And um, I think he would be a really, really fun one to have a career like that he's done because I think he came from a really dark place and he's built himself up and he's had such an incredible story of, of just that mentality of I can and I will. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of turned his life around and, and showed that he could be successful and do all of that jazz mm -hmm. and being happy. And healthy. Yeah. And is it a, is it um is I can and I will a hairdressing thing? Is he a hair? Yeah, so it's it's like a mi I think it's a mixture of things. I think it's like the beauty hair kind of creative industry, like the we're all kind of in that kind of bubble. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think a lot of people, I guess, that his celebrity clients have kind of shared upon that and spoken about that on different things with them as well. Mm -hmm. So it's got like a lot of airtime and like really really incredible things. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, yeah. I mean, what I always, what I always think about you from the minute I started talking to you is that you want to make a difference. Yeah, you know, I think that just comes through every time I speak to you. You know, so passionate about you. Just uh, it's you want to leave a mark and make a difference and do good and change lives and look after people and you know, yeah. mm, we're gonna give For it a sure. good go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I like that. Well, I'll be following him straight after this. Yeah, do it. He's amazing. So, uh, this is my favourite question. What have you learned the hard way, Thomas? 
Oh my god, what have I learned the hard way? Um, stop thinking I'm the shit when I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, like, obviously, I'm talented, so like, I'm not gonna like deny that because I feel like everyone needs everyone needs to wake up and be like, you are the shit. But um, I think there was a time where I think because. I've always, I always was that confident person. Like, I, I've just generally, when I grow up, I was quite confident. Like, mm-hmm. I went to theatre school. I was that <laughs> fucking drama kid that was like, everyone, look at me. Um, and then I think, um, yeah, like, a few things happened where I was like, oh. And then it kind of went from, like, here to, like, here. And I was like, oh, I'm not the shit. Um, and I think learning to balance confidence and cockiness um, was something that was a lot to learn. But now I think I'm still learning to know my worth, power and skill and talent, but not making it come across like I'm better than other people. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's, I think I've come across people like that a lot. And I guess I'm still working on being like, no, you know that you're good, but Mm -hmm. don't overdo that. Um, I think it's, yeah, that's probably one. Um, And stop saying yeah. Like, I don't want to say yes to everyone. Like, I think I'm just a yes person. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. I need to just just stop saying yeah too much and be like, actually, no, I want to just pat my dog that day. Well, the thing is, when you say yes to everyone, you end up saying no to the more important people in your life and the things you really want to do, don't you? Exactly mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I like what your first one, though. I was thinking that balance of uh, being very talented and humble is beautiful yeah. when you meet it, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like when I've met those people and I just think, oh, I need to absorb a bit of that. Yeah. You know, because it's hard to find the balance between, you know, I had that phase when I was younger where I thought I was the shit for sure, thought it was the absolute bollocks. And, um, you know, and it's always when you're young. I think in your 20s, it's absolutely, you know, it was coming off me in waves. Uh, But I think when I meet people who are truly amazing and then they found this humbleness, I just, they're so delightful to be around and they don't have to tell you how amazing they are. And they're so kind and such good teachers. And I think, oh, whenever I've met those people, I just think, oh, I want to be like that when I grow up. That's what I'm aiming for. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. kind of, um, it's an inner confidence. I think it's true confidence. Yeah. Like grown up confidence, something like that. Oh, definitely. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I like that. It's come up before that someone said um, they wish they'd thought they were less of the shit when they were young. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else I think had it's that like... answer. I feel like everyone gets that. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I feel like you need an element of that in your everyday life. Like, I mm. there's a drag queen that me and my husband absolutely love called Juno Birch, and every like she's like a northern girl, and she's like every morning you need to wake up, look at that mirror, and say you are stunning. And she like talks like this, and she's like very stunning, very gorgeous, and she's like just look at yourself and say it. And me and Joel were like, yeah. <laughs> but it's just like it's just yeah it's balanced and it obviously it's a balance it is yeah. and i think you know a little overconfidence is better than beating yourself up yeah i think so i think it's funny <laughs> so don't let someone squash it i think that's the biggest thing is if you let someone squash it too much then you lose it completely mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and i also think this like don't dull it down to make other people feel better mm-hmm. like, i've done a lot of that you know it's... i think <laughs> made myself like not seem quite as clever or as talented because I'm dead clever and talented but you know just <laughs> played played my talent down if you like to make somebody yeah, else yeah. feel a little bit better yeah um and you know got to stop that shit yeah mm-hmm. yeah 100%. I like it so this it, this might be the same sort of answer for you but what advice would you give to your younger self now I mean you're young anyway so you're going to have to go quite young. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say just never, ever, ever change your personality for anyone. Um, I think when I was young, like I did, like 
if I could go back to like personality when I was young, I feel like I would be unstoppable. Um, I feel like if people didn't tear you down and make you feel like shit, like I would just tell myself, do not listen to anyone. Do well, obviously listen, but like, <laughs> don't listen to anyone to tell you to change yourself. Like, you can change your skill, you can change your mindset on things, but don't change you mm -hmm. because like everything that makes up your uniqueness and your authenticity for like everything of your daily day life and your personality like you never want to be changing that for anyone and mm -hmm. sometimes I just wish that I still had some of that pizzazz <laughs> <laughs> you've got tons of pizzazz love <laughs> well thanks babe <laughs> you've got the most pizzazz out of a lot of people I know <laughs> <laughs> well um and so do you think that when you were younger um you toned that down it's a little bit like what I was saying you toned that pizzazz down what to yeah, fit like, in or geez. yeah like where I grew up in a really tiny little town called Chesham in like Buckinghamshire okay. um if you could imagine like Katie Hopkins Boris Johnson Piers Morgan Nigel Ooh. Farage <laughs> that sounds um, joyful yeah, like, where I'm from is just the most, like, anti-everything. Yeah, like, racist, conservative, like, homophobic, trans, mm -hmm. everything you could just imagine. Yeah. I was, like, chased from school. I was, like, every, like, literally anything you could imagine literally happened at school. And it, I think that's where it just went like that. And, yeah. like, I'm, like, now that I'm just completely, like, free of everything, like, I feel like... Mid-twenties is my time to be like, bam, bitch, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that, um, when did you, so it, do you sort of think that around school or whatever, that sort of fabulousness was a bit knocked out of you or you were suppressing it? When did, do you think that, when do you think you got to be more yourself? Um, yeah, like, so when I went to that, like, theatre school, everyone was very similar to me. So, like, I was just, like, bam, like, yeah. and everything was great. And then, like, I was very lucky to have um, a scholarship to it. So, like, it was still quite expensive, but, like, my auntie treated me, um, <laughs> which was very nice. Um, and then I had to go to, like, regular secondary school. Mm. Um, so then... <laughs> that like I wanted to do drama for my GCSEs and like all of that and everyone was like what the fuck <laughs> and I was just like oh guess this is not happening um, <laughs> I'll take football then <laughs> I was like at least I get to play with balls um <laughs> sorry that was so bad I shouldn't have said that um it's all right <laughs> um but yeah, and then I kind of squashed myself, um, I guess, properly until maybe I was like 22, mm -hmm. um, where I realised like my sexuality and my gender identity and like, even though it's been quite difficult living in Bournemouth, which is it's still quite not that cultured, mm -hmm. but... I think I I think I've excelled being around people that I get to choose to be around that have helped me realize and understand myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Do you well? Would you agree with this? I think hairdressing is quite a good place um, for people to be more themselves. You know, as far as careers go, hairdressing can be pretty open minded. Yeah. I think. I think it's always breaking boundaries, yeah. You know, we've got a lot of different types of people in hairdressing and more quickly accepted maybe than other jobs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We yeah. are lucky. I think at most creative industries, I think we are quite lucky because everyone is so fluid with everything like that comes yeah. with those kind of general yeah. constructs of life. Yeah. I mean, that's what I love about hairdressing. You know, that feeling that I'm in a creative industry with just all sorts of people. You know, that's what I thrive off is, well, I just yeah. like talking to people, you know. But I like talking to all sorts of people. I don't want to talk to people just like me. That's boring. So yeah. I love it. You know, I think it's 
it's an exciting industry, which is why I came back. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, I came back and, you know, really, I like talking to hairdressers more than clients, which is why I do what I'm doing now. I just yeah. talk to hairdressers <laughs> all day. Yeah. <laughs> the mad yeah. lot of them. Mad lot of us. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's excellent. Yeah. I love it. it is so I'm just going to read a couple of these. We've got a couple of comments. I'm sometimes too scared to touch the screen because I'm scared I'll turn us <laughs> off. But I'm getting brave. Yeah. Grown up confidence comes with humbling experiences and accepting we all have our own uniqueness. Don't yeah. compete. Can't even speak. Collaborate. Go on, girl. That was yeah. a great one. That's my friend, Michelle. Oh, work, Michelle. Michelle. We love you. <laughs> she's fabulous. Michelle is actually, I talk about Michelle quite a lot when I tell my story because she's a yeah. client I've had since I was in my 20s at Tony and Guy, and she's a life and um, business coach. And she's the person I developed the idea of the resilient hairdresser with. Nice. So she's the person who made me think about what was special about me. Yeah. And I came We with all this. need a Michelle. We do. She's fabulous. Yeah. Oh, hello. Loads of people. I don't know how you get a map. You just stroll down. Oh, yeah, I got it. Oh, hi, Kelly. Oh. Is there questions? Oh, my gosh, is there questions? <laughs> no, no. People are just saying yes. <laughs> yes. There's lots of things when you're telling your story about squashing yourself and stuff like that you know I think that's um I don't know I, I've come across so many people in hairdressing who it's a bit like they get to be themselves finally in a salon and I love that I yeah love that when you find your people definitely I think so I think hairdressing's a crazy crowd isn't it and I like it yeah wow well I've had a fabulous time talking to you Thomas yeah, me too it was so nice to talk to you in real time. Literally, literally. <laughs> but I'll probably leave you a voice note tomorrow. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, guess what, I've just watched. Yeah. Like, was chatting, Send like, me a video like, of you dancing to Kylie. I enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> literally, her new album's so good. <laughs> oh, this lovely lady from Australia. Hello. Oh, work. Hi, love. Disco tip. They've got such a cool salon. The salon's called Horse Meat Disco Salon. Oh, I think I've heard of this. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. I got chatting with her after chatting with Viv. Oh, it was it well at? It was on my Weller chat. I think it was on maybe my Weller was... chat. Yeah, because I felt like maybe Tegan was talking about this because her, her girlfriend lives in Hi, Australia. Steve. Oh. Oh, maybe we all know each other. Disco yeah. Tiff, let us know. I, I speak to this person. Yes. Right then, we're off. It's been Fabulous. delightful. I've had yeah. a lot of time. And I'll yeah. catch you later. Yeah, and lovely nice to chat to you, babe. Yeah, you too. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 I don't know how you leave. <laughs>